Hello everyone and welcome to another day of Road to TCG Worlds 2018. Now, as most of you know, the European International Championships just took place this past weekend um, <clears throat> and Tord Reklev was able to win the tournament once again. Now he's won the biggest tournament in the whole world just last July and now he's won the biggest tournament ever in Europe. So pretty amazing feats by Tord. Um, I've had the pleasure of playing against him twice. I played against him at the first European tournament held um, when the concept was created back in 2012 and I actually lost to him in top 8 of that tournament. And then we faced off again at Worlds this year where I was able to come out with the victory. So um, calling Tord the best player in the world right now is probably not a stretch just based on his results. He has an insane amount of championship points. Um, his lists, not only from the international um, in July, but also this one was pretty, pretty interesting, pretty novelty. Um, it was like the concept of deck building in that deck is actually amazing. So today we're going to review the top five decks from the London International. It would be top six, but the sixth place has not. The sixth place, well, Kenyon, I don't think has posted his um, his list. So let's start off with Tord's deck, which honestly is a is a piece of no, that's not there. It's a it's a master art whatever thing it's it's amazing um 4-4 four, four line of Zoro Art GX the whole deck is based around this new amazing card 210 HP pretty good and then the whole reason this card is this good is its ability trade once during your turn before you attack you may discard a card from your hand and if you do you draw two cards so thankfully it's cumulative so therefore if you have four Zoro Art GXs you can draw up to eight cards in your deck in any given turn so um, that's a lot of card advantage especially if your opponent is not running any Zoroark himself or herself and you essentially are drawing more than Sycamore and could potentially be discarding less and also it's really cool that you get to choose which resources you discard so I think that's a great a great way to view Zoroark GX and how I realized um, or something I realized throughout this weekend, having the more Zorark GXs you have, the closer you get to the whole, the, to the huge, amazing draw power that Sycamore is, but without having used your supporter. Um, and essentially, like with Sycamore, you end up discarding sometimes zero cards, sometimes seven cards, sometimes somewhere in between. However, you don't get to choose. You just discard everything, and then you can't use Guzma, you can't use Azerola, you can't use N. And how many times, how many games have you been where you, you're you thinking, oh, I really need to N and Guzma the same turn, but you can't because they're supporters. Well, Sora GX allows you to access so many resources of your deck that... Um, you are able to essentially draw everything you need, such as energy, such as the Pokemon you need to attack, and you can still play cards like Cosma, Acerola, or End during your turn. So um, this makes Zoroark, just its ability makes it a great card. Um, and then we have its Riotous Beating Attack, which deals 20 damage for each of your Pokemon in play. So up to 120 damage in standard, 150 with a choice band. Not too shabby. Um, Unless you're a fighting type Pokemon or <coughs> Gardevoir GX, I don't think you're one who can win Zoroark GX easily. And then, um, since you're going to be training two hit KOs, but you do have access to Acerola and Puzzles of Time, which we'll be reviewing a little bit um, later in this in this deck, um, like you have the recipe for an for an amazing deck. That's what it is. And also, some of the fighting weakness is covered by Colissa Pet GX because a lot of uh, fighting type Pokemon, such as Lycan Rock, such as Psychart, um, are weak to grass. So that's an advantage that you get by pairing up these two. Um, Colissa Pet is a super efficient attacker, 210 HP as well. First impression deals 30 damage. Um, and if it became your active Pokemon this turn, you deal 90 damage. So. Many people have asked me, why aren't you playing, um, or why didn't Tord play any Floatstone? That's the obvious combo with Colisopet, right? However, because you're drawing so many cards, and because you're essentially not needing as many resources in terms of 
<coughs> um, drawing cards and accessing them. Like, the one issue with Kalisabed Carp was the fact that there are many turns where if you want to advance your board state by drawing cards, you actually can't. Um, you actually can't because you end up having to use a Zorolla or Gizmat to just keep up the damage output. However, um, with Zorar getting you all those cards, getting you the energy, getting you more evolutions and access to other cards, you actually do get to use um, essentially Gizmat or Zorolla pretty much every turn. So that's really amazing um, and that's one of the great strengths of this deck and that's why it doesn't even need Floatstone to work. Um, those are the two main attackers. We do have one Zorark Breakthrough, which is uh, one of the two non-GX Pokemon in the deck. Uh, Mindjack dulls a lot of damage and is one of the answers to the Alola Ninetales. Um, that has the Aurora Veil ability. It's not Aurora Veil, that's the video game. <laughs> the ability that prevents getting damage and effects of attacks from GX and DX. Um, then we have, as a side attacker, Mewtwo as well, because Puzzle can give this deck a little bit of trouble. So Mewtwo with its Psychic Attack, it, it's only dealing 80 damage to Puzzle or potentially um, 140 with a Choice Band. However, it does have a huge 130 HP and when combined with Mr. Mime, Puzzle isn't doing too much um, to your deck as a whole. So that's why Mewtwo was included and this was explained to me by some of the other players who were using this deck. Then you have the Tapu Goko with a huge synergy between Guzma and Golisabut found the free retreat ghost and they roll as well. And finally we have our three Tapu Leles in order to get some uh, draw support and make sure we have the right supporter when we need it. And also in order, um, because it's a great attacker as well. Um, then supporters is the first um, successful deck I believe in a very long time that does not play 4 or 3 Sycamore. Um, Tord actually dropped down to 2, he's running 4N, 4 Gizma, 3 Bridget, 3 Acerola, and 2 Sycamore. So, a lot of people have asked me, well, why do you need 3 Bridget? It's not that you need 3 Bridget, right? No deck needs essentially more than 1, because after you've played it, you don't need it anymore. A lot of us have been playing 2, because that reduces the chances of Acerola being prized, pretty much to zero in any given game, so that's good enough. And then with three, it's pretty much, it's it's never going to be close to zero. I mean, it's never going to be strictly zero. There will always be a chance that you get all of a certain card price. However, with three, like if you do prize all three Bridgets and you needed the Bridget on turn one, that's really, really unlucky. So the reasoning behind three is even after you've used one, the other Bridgets just become extra discard for other four um, Zorark's trade ability, so there's no actual harm in running three uh, Bridgets in order to to try to get it as early as possible. And then we have three Lele, four Rule Trouble, and three Bridget to get that turn one Bridget. That's 10 cards out of, us, uh, out of our 60 card deck that can get us Bridget turn one. That also means that we will, I mean, running three actual Bridget also means that we will be starting Bridget naturally um, in our hand a lot more than if we were running one or even two so it's a huge huge difference and also in this deck when you want to have as many Zorak GXs on your bench as you can instead of Tapu Leles actually having the natural Bridget is also super beneficial so that the Tapu Leles just end up being used when you actually need them to for an Azerola or a Kuzma instead or an N um, so yeah that's the reasoning behind the triple Bridget um, for Kuzma is amazing obviously with Golisabot and Zorark. It also helps that these two Pokemon, they do hit for a lot of damage, however, they're not always one hit KOing or getting the one hit KO, so they could allow you to simply bypass the big threat, the big HP Pokemon that you can't deal with, and just finish up a game by targeting the small things on the bench. Um, 3 Azerola, of course, amazing to heal. We have um, 4N, of course, to limit our opponent's draw power, especially if they're taking prices, and because we do have Zorak GX to completely recover from even an N to 1, which is pretty amazing. And then we have 2 Sigamore, because Sigamore is still that good, and we wouldn't want to play 0. But, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's not as necessary because you are drawing a lot of cards with Zorak. Um, then we have 4 Rule Trouble and 4 Puzzle of Time. Puzzle of Time is an amazing card. We don't have uh, Verse Seeker anymore, but these act as the Seekers, but also they can recover Enhanced Hammers, they can recover Choice Bands, they can recover DCEs or any Pokemon you want. So they're essentially 
um, wild cards in your deck as long as you have two of them at the same time, which is pretty cool. And thanks to Zoroark, you will end up drawing two Puzzle of Time a lot of the time in your hand, so that's really neat. Then we have, as I mentioned, two Choice Man and two Enhanced Hammer. These cards enhance damage and also uh, slow down your opponent, which are pretty good. And with Puzzle of Time, you actually have a chance of using up to six of each, which is pretty cool. And then we have four Field Blower. This is another card that a lot of people ask me, like, why would you need four Field Blower? Why not three? Why not two? Well, essentially, you rely so much on the trade ability that you really don't want to let your opponent um, shut off your ability if you're up against a Garbodor deck for more than a single given turn. So you essentially can never be without your abilities. Four Field Lower gives you the best chances to try to um, prevent that so that you always have the Field Lower to get rid of the... to get rid of, to get rid of the tool card from Garbo Toxin Garb. And any Field Lowers that you don't need, they just become discard fodder for trade. So that's, that's the beauty of this deck, that any card you don't need, it immediately becomes two extra cards from your deck that you might need thanks to Zorak GX's ability and that's a really cool uh, thing about this deck. You also, with four puzzle of time, you essentially have more than four N, which is actually amazing because it could just keep removing your opponent's resources from their hand. Um, so yeah, this deck honestly is beautiful, I love it and I'm not going to be surprised when this deck is actually taking League Cups and the next regional, the next standard regional in Memphis by Storm because it's truly, truly beautiful. I actually think this deck is not Tort's List. Tort's List is three grass instead of four and it actually has a Mallow. I'm just noticing this. Um, this is actually Tort's List. Mallow also um, becomes any two cards you want. So essentially you mallow, you put the, two t the top two in your deck, um, the top two from your deck that you want, and then you use trade to get them. So it can guarantee choice bands, it can guarantee DCs, it can guarantee the grass, it can guarantee any Pokemon you need, the field blower, the enhanced hammer, um, the double puzzle as well, which is really cool. So Mallow, super, super strong. I know some players who ran this deck chose not to run the Mallow and went with the fourth grass, which feels like a safer choice, but Tort did end up winning the tournament with this list. Um, I apologize for not having the Mallow initially. I actually built this off of um, the list that Benjamin Fan showed me, and then he, um, I saw Tord and I noticed that was the one card difference, but I forgot to edit on the deck. But this is the number one deck, um, probably close to the best deck in the format. However, I will argue that I'm actually, um, I'm actually not sure this has a super positive Gardevoir GX matchup. So, um, enhanced hammers are good to delay the Gardevoir. Uh, Golisabed is obviously super efficient in attacking against Gar uh, Gardevoir and trying to make it so that they have to use as many resources as possible to get knockouts. Um, the deck applies a lot of early pressure, which does destabilize Gardevoir in its setup. And you also have the four field lowers to remove the choice bands immediately and make it even harder for Gardevoir to get knockouts. However, with a huge reliance on Zorark and Gardevoir is now running two Galates instead of just the one, um, I feel like this deck at best would have a 50-50. If Gardevoir manages to stabilize, it should run over this deck because the golden rule, as I've mentioned before against Gardevoir, is if you're not one hit KOing Gardevoir or you're not stopping its ability, you're gonna have a really bad time. So this deck doesn't accomplish either of those things. However, it does try to it does try to apply enough early pressure where it compensates for that. So that's its win condition against Gardevoir. I'm not sure that it's going to be effective every time because as long as Gardevoir manages to stabilize, um, it's gonna be really rough for the deck. But hey, it clearly worked and it worked for Tord, so that's good enough. Um, so yeah, this was the London first place list. Now let's move on to Zachary Crackler's second place list, which is also super interesting. As some of you guys saw, um, I did build a uh, Silvali metal type Pokemon in the channel a while back when the card was released. I actually had Celestila and Cortana in my initial build. I did not have Genesect and um, Del Mice or the Max Elixirs. Max Elixirs felt redundant with uh, Registeel and Silvali, but clearly they were needed. 
So, huge props to Zachary for innovating with this archetype. Still Valley GX, an amazing card, 210 HP again. So, seems like we are in a format of where stage ones are going to be the dominating power, or pretty much the dominating power. Um, Kyrie unit does um, remove the retreat gods from your basic Pokemon. Turbo Drive deals 120 damage, and you get to attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. <coughs> and Rebel GX deals 50 damage for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So overall a pretty solid card. Fighting Weakness doesn't help it against the new um, Gardevoir lists running to Galate, but that's where all the metal type Pokemon come in. So Registeel um, is a pretty good starter to the deck. It also accelerates energy right off the bat. We do have 10 basic um, metal energy, so that with 4 Ultra Ball and 4 Sycamore gives you a lot of acceleration to the deck. Um, and a lot of potential of just getting the, um, the energy in the discard pile right off the bat and getting it back into play. Then we have the two Celestila, which actually ended up being pretty important um, for, for him because it's a huge basic Pokemon. 200 HP is really, really good. It's a metal Pokemon that's not weak to fire, which is also pretty amazing. And then you have Rocket Fall, which deals 30 more damage for. 30 plus 30 more for every colorless in your opponent's active Pokemon retreat cost. So that with a choice band deals a 1 HK on Cardboard GX. And then you have Moon Press, which deals 130 damage, pretty solid for 4 energy. And then you have Blaster GX, where you turn all your prize cards face up and you deal 180 damage. So really, really solid card with all the energy acceleration. Getting 4 energy into onto Celesteela is actually not that big a deal. And you do have. Um, you do have Delmice in order to increase the damage output. So with Delmice you're dealing 140, and then with a Choice Band you're dealing 130 damage. I mean 170 damage with Moonpress, and that's a one video on top of Lele. So that's also a pretty good um, win condition to set up throughout the game in order to get quick and easy knockouts on top of Lele's. Um, then we have the one Cortana GX, 170 HP, ability Slice Off, when you play Cortana you get to remove a special energy card from one of your opponent's, opponent, from one of your opponent's Pokemon no matter where it is, so that's really really good, um, it's essentially an enhanced hammer as a Pokemon, and then Gale Blade is not too impressive, you deal 70 damage and then you shuffle Cortana, however play GX allows you to simply immediately take a prize card, so there are many times where you're down to one prize card, you're getting end, but Cartana makes it so that any energy you place on it, the, essentially you get a win condition for the later stages in the game. And you get the bonus ability as well, so that's really cool. Then finally we have Genesect DX, an EX that has yet to see too much play. But its ability Drive Change allows you to attach a tool card to it and then return it into your hand. So you can attach Choice Bands and then reuse it on a different Pokemon. You can attach the Fighting Memory for Seal Valley and keep it in play. Whilst it has a, a Choice Band and then you play Field Blower, remove the Choice Band, return the Fighting Memory and then attach it to Seal Valley. So really cool combos potential there. And then you have Rapid Blaster which deals 100 damage and then you can discard as many Metal Energy as you want attached to Genesect DX and deal 20 more for every energy you discard. So this is your way of dealing that extra little bit of damage that perhaps Celestila or even Silvali cannot um, with enough energy. Although you're not powering up energy freely like with a Bronze Song from before, but Rapid Blaster could definitely set up a lot of win conditions or just um, be able to get rid of a huge threat, especially with the combos of Max Elixirs. And then for support we have the Triple Ele and the One Oranguru for the later stages in the game. Pretty cool list. Um, I really, really like it. I think it's super, super solid. I think it's a bit um, thin on the supporter count, but it had to take. Like, my list it did not include Max Elixir because it's running like four Guzma, two Bridget, and the four N, and that's um, a lot of space you need. It, it was also running Psychic Memory and Fighting Memory, not just one. So, Segri was able to streamline the deck and include the Max Elixirs, which, as we saw from the stream, were super super important. He does have four Sycamore, three and three Guzma, one Bridget, and two Isorola. Isorola is a pretty good card because your Pokemon do have um, a lot of HP and you get to recycle a lot of the choice bands or energy, especially DCEs. Um, not maximum end because you are a more aggressive deck, so you don't really need all four N. 
Um, one bridge it seems okay. Uh, you do probably want to bridge it turn one for the type nulls. However, if you don't, it's not that big a deal. You do have a lot of basic Pokemon that you can draw into naturally. Um, then you have the four uh, Ultra Wolf, four Max Elixir, three Choice Band, two Fighting Memory in order to try to counter those Trampas. I'm not sure on this. I think I would have preferred to see a Psychic Memory or it would make more sense to me just to deal with all the Garbodors. However, Fighting Memory obviously was really, really good against Sora GX, so perhaps that was the call for the day. Um, and also Trampa, although Trampa is not a big threat to this deck. And then finally we have two Field Lower and a single Resty Stretcher, along with four uh, Double Colorless and ten Basic Metal Energy. So that's the second place list, pretty cool to see. Um, New Pokemon such as Zoroark and Silvali and Celestila, um, along with Cartan as well, <laughs> um, take their place in the format. Then next up we have everyone's favorite deck and the one I should have played <laughs> at London. Um, we have Gardevoir GX with the 4 Max Potion. This is actually wrong, it only has 3 Max Potion. I'm actually not sure what went wrong here, it's probably this field lower. <laughs> I apologize for that, there it's fixed. So, we have the 4-3-3-2 Cardivore line, probably the new standard, at least with the 2 Galate, perhaps not the 3 Curlia, but Cardivore GX, pretty um, incredible, the world champion card, 230 HP, Secret Spring, uh, allows you to attach extra fair energy from your hand to any Pokemon you want, Infinite Force deals 30 damage for every Pokemon, for every energy, sorry, Gardevoir and the opposing Pokemon has and Twilight GX allows you to shuffle back end cards So the whole idea behind this deck is it no longer has Sylveon to search for the three cards you need But it does have max potions where Gardevoir is a huge huge Pokemon and as I mentioned if you're not one one hit KO in Gardevoir You're probably trying to stop its abilities and if you're not one hit KO in Gardevoir Then max potion becomes really really good because Gardevoir can be very self-sufficient and very efficient attacker um, with a single fairy energy, it deals a lot of damage and with the max potions you get 4 full heals on the Gardevoir and then with Twilight GX you essentially get up to 8. So that's really amazing and it opens up win conditions where you could potentially deck out your opponent due to this combination. Um, you also have Kalade, we have 2 Kalades with Premonition you look at the top 5 cards of your deck and put them back on top of your deck in any order and then sensitive play deals 6 damage plus 70 more if you played a supporter this turn which is this deck's called pretty much every turn um, to Galade as a response to the Seal Valley, to the metals, uh, Pokemon such as Registeel and especially Zoroark GX <coughs> it just makes it a lot, a lot easier to commit 2 Fairy or a single DC on a Galade to get a 1-hit KO on a Zoroark than it is to commit 5 energy to 1-hit KO a Zoroark that has a DC attached or 7 if it doesn't have any energy. Then for the supporting cast we have the 3 double A the single Alolan Vulpix with a beacon attack which searches for up to 2 Pokemon from your deck and then the 1-1 one, one Octarian line which has become a huge staple in the deck. Then for support regards we have the same lineup as the Sylvian version 4 and 3 Sycamore, 3 Cosma and 2 Bridget because Bridget is that important to the deck. Um, 4 Ultra Wolf, 4 Rare Candy, 4 Max Potion as I mentioned earlier, the 2 Field Lower, the 1 Pearl City which could easily be a 3rd Field Lower but Pearl City is still a very strong card in today's format and then we have 2 Choice Bands and a single Super Rod which is also wrong, the list actually had two super art and seven fairy energy so the two super art actually allows you or gives you more more room to abuse the max potions and then recover energy before you end up using twilight and essentially if you recover the super arts instead of energy you're essentially recovering um 14 cards because the super arts can then recover up to six more fairy energy so there's a really cool balance there, um, the deck is super super solid, I definitely regret not having run this, I knew about the deck, I couldn't feel comfortable running it, I was too attached to Sylveon, but it was clearly um, the best way to run Gardevoir for the tournament and the deck I should have run. And this list actually ended up winning in juniors, one of the juniors I coached, Daniel Rosas, he ended up winning with this exact list. And I gotta give props to Sina Gatsis card for coming up with the concept along with Mike Fouché for refining the list, um, including Octillery instead of Oranguru. <laughs> um, so yeah, huge props to them as well. 
Um, so that's I, I feel like I've made changes to every list, haven't I? And then the fourth place in London, this is a guess to um, to Michael Long's list based on what we talked about before the tournament. This is essentially his same Vancouver list, but with the triple field lower as a way to combat Carpenter. Um, I don't think anyone expected Colisabeth to be this big before the tournament, and. This is also the, very similar to the deck I ran, it's only two cards different, actually. Um, but yeah, we have the Greninja we all love to hate, 130 HP, Shadow Stitching, 40 damage, and you block abilities from your opponent's next turn, and Moonlight Slash, you deal 60 plus 20 if you decide to return the Water Energy to your hand. Greninja Break then allows you to discard a basic Water Energy and play 6 damage counters on any Pokemon you want, and then we have the Water Duplicates Frogadier, where you get to search for more Frogadier from your deck, and that way you're able to set up um, your Greninjas. We have the 1 1 Stormy Line with Space Beacon for support, where you discard a card and you get back 2 Water Energy, basic Water Energy, from your discard pile to your hand. The combo with Giant Water Shuriken is really, really good because it's essentially 120 extra damage every turn if you have 2 Greninja Breaks in play plus whatever damage you end up dealing with Shadow Stitching or Moonlight Clash. Then Michael ran a single Tapu Fini GX, because Tapu Storm GX is a really, really strong attack. You get to shuffle any big spread you want um, that's active into um, your opponent's deck. Aqua Ring is a Nogi attack, dealing 20 damage and then switching Tapu Fini back to safety. And then finally we have Hydro Shot, which could in some games end up being a game-winning, um, create a game-winning scenario. And then we have the single Tabulele because it's just an extra consistency card which um, you can always feel good about to have access to, but if you can, you want to avoid playing the GXs because they are two price liabilities. And then for supporter cards, we have four Sycamore, four N, two Skyla, and the single Lily. Uh, one of the changes I made to the list was I dropped Tapu Fini for a second Staryu, and I, did, I only had two Field Doors and I had two Lily. So Lily is a really cool card not only to recover off of end, but also to start off with um, <coughs> because you do have the extra benefit of drawing up to 8 cards and then uh, we have 4 Ultra Ball, 4 Evo Soda to maximize consistency to get that turn to Water Duplicates we have 3 um, Brooklet Heal, 2 Enhance Hammer to deny your opponents and slow them down 3 Field Blower for Michael in order to make sure you always have your abilities up and going um, in the Garbodor matchup two choice band to increase the damage output, and then one rescue switcher and one super to have that versatility of choosing to put back Pokemon back to your hand or your deck or putting energy back into your deck as well. And finally we have four um, splash energy and six basic water energy to round out the deck. And then now we have the fifth place which is um, actually the deck that probably made me falter and just lose any chance I had of getting day two. Um, I faced um, Theodore, the guy who got, I, I, he got top eight, this is, I don't think he got fifth, I'm sure he got top eight, um, but yeah, this was the list I, I lost to because I got dunked on game one and then I won pretty easily game two and then game three, I had everything to get up and running, I just needed a water energy to use water duplicates and I would have been pretty good. I used Sycamore and I whiffed the water energy and that um, and that ended my tournament run essentially in round 7 when I was 4-1-1 uh, at that point. If I get the water energy I'm pretty sure I win because this has a horrible Greninja matchup uh, with no Giratina, no way to 1-KO or stop abilities. Well it does have ways to 1-KO but it's never a good trade. Um, against Greninja, as we saw Michael just demolish this deck in, in top 8 and I could have been 5 on 1 and it would have been a completely different tournament but I whiffed the water, so it happens. So this deck is focused around Buzzle GX, another of the new GXs 190 HP, Jet Punch deals a lot of damage, 30 plus 30 to the bench and then with uh, the aid of Choice Band and Strong Energy you up get up to 80 damage to the active and 30 to the bench. Regirock allows you to deal that extra 10, 10 bit of damage, so when you use something like um, Brooklet Heal on turn 1, and then you have a Puzzle active with a strong, you're actually dealing 60, which does get a knockout on many of the basic Pokemon that are popular right now. 
Then um, there's a 2 2 line of Light and Rock GX, 200 HP, really good ability with Bloodthirsty Eyes. Uh, Close Lash is a solid attack, although with no DCs it's not as easy to power up. But Dangerous Rogue GX is a really, really cool attack that always has your opponent on, on the edge, right? And they always have to take it into account based on how many Pokemon they can actually afford to play down. Then um, they also ran a single side card with 120 HP, they attack Rumble where they don't allow the opponent to retreat by dealing 30 damage and then Geo Strike, which deals 120 and it deals 10 damage to each of your bench Pokemon. So I'm not sure why this card was included. Uh, with Regirock you hit 40 and 130. But Rumble doesn't seem too great of an attack. Um, I guess you could trap a Tapulele perhaps against some decks. You could trap a Garbotoxin Garp maybe. Um, I don't think it's that good, but hey, they included it. And they also included a side card EX, which that's actually a very strong card, 190 HP. Lance Bull steals 20 damage plus 20 more if there's a stadium card. So that plus a strong plus a stadium also gets a 60 damage going against um, the weaker basics. Cell Storm dealing 60 and then healing is really, really good. And then Lance Rest, 3400 is actually not too impressive, but um, you will rarely use it in this deck. Um, one Lele and a 2-2 Octillery line instead of triple Lele and 2-2 Octillery. That's actually pretty interesting to see. However, with Brooklet Hill it makes sense because they're not even running Bridget. So their turn 1 Bridget is actually not an option. And with Brooklet Hill they are able to find more basic Pokemon. Then we have the 4-4-4 split of Sycamore, N and Cosma. Um, as their supporters, then we have 4 Ultra Ball and 4 Max Elixir, of course, to accelerate the energy going um, into, into play, although they only ran 9 basic fighting energy, so that's kind of a, um, a contradiction. You run Max Elixir in high energy count decks, however, they're not running high energy counts because they want to also run the great um, strong energy. Then um, a single Rescue Stretcher, a single Field Lower, Triple Choice Band and Triple Floatstone. So overall a pretty solid deck, obviously. Um, super weak to Galissa, but I would say super weak to Carpenter as well. Uh, but they, it, it took two of them all the way to top 8. So the deck is clearly quite good. Um, not like the most straightforward way to build a deck, especially with a such low Tapu Lele count. But it clearly worked in the format for um, the London tournament. So that will conclude our review of the top 5 decks in the tournament. I will be live streaming this week probably using these decks or I might live stream expanded. I'm actually not sure. But this will be all for me today guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, my tournament run ended up being ended up at 298th place so not a good result. Like I said, um, Greninja has a great matchup against the fighting deck. I ended up getting unlucky two games in a row, and it happens, right? That was Greninja was a high risk, high reward deck, and luck was not on my side that day. Um, I raised, in, I I used Greninja because I wanted to play. I wanted to have the advantage, the advantage against Gardevoir in Swiss to try to get easy wins to get into day two. And then instead of playing against Gardevoir, I ended up playing against three Grass decks, two Bikabulu and a Golisabed. And I lost that rough game against the Fighting type deck, which should have been a win. It would have been 5-1-1 one, one at that point, and one more win would have put me into um, day two pretty much, because I had good resistance. But hey, it happens, right? Um, next week is San Jose, and we'll do better then. So thank you so much for watching, don't forget to leave a like, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.